Hi, welcome to Distinti definition video number one. In this video, we're going to explain the difference between a deterministic system and a non-deterministic system. Again, in this video, we're going to explain what a deterministic system is and what a non-deterministic system is, how to identify such systems, and why this is important to us. But before that, let me explain the purpose of these Distinti Definition video series. These uh, definitions are foundational to the work at Distinti.com, the ongoing work. Many of the upcoming videos are built on these definitions. And so instead of having to take time to explain these definitions each time and clutter up all the new upcoming videos, what I'm doing is making a definition per video series so that in the other video series, I can reference these videos and say, please go watch these definition videos before you go further. And these definitions will be found on a specific place at the distinti.com site. It will be under a definitions tab on the main menu and a definition icon on the main page. So what is a deterministic system? Well, in general, a deterministic system is a system whose state at any time can be determined, you see the word there, from models. This includes determining the state of a system sometime in the past or in the future. And a model can be anything such as a mathematical model, an analog model, an empirical model, computer model, finite element model, analysis, etc., etc., etc. Now, in engineering, we might make this a little simpler and say that a deterministic system is a system whose outcome can be determined from the initial conditions. In other words, if, if you put uh, all the ingredients for a cake in a mixing bowl and you follow all the steps, what you're going to get out at the end is a cake, not a pie, not a cheesecake, not a donut. A good example of a deterministic system is orbits. Okay, down here is the orbit of Earth about the Sun. There's the Sun here. This is the orbit of Jupiter. And let's say we want to send a space probe from the Earth to Jupiter. Well, what we have are deterministic models that allow us to predict where Jupiter will be any time in the future and where the Earth will be at any time in the future or whatever, whatever. And so that would be able to allow us to compute the correct launch time, the launch window as it's called, the initial direction of launch and the amount of thrust in order to get a trajectory that will intercept Jupiter at a later time where it will be. Okay, so essentially, a deterministic system allows us to see into the future. It also allows us to see into the past. Because if something happens, and we need to know, well, okay, something happened, where was Jupiter, you know, three months ago? Well, we could just work this system backwards to find out where Jupiter was three months ago, to, you know, for whatever reason, if we needed to do that. Okay, so a deterministic system allows us to predict the future to allow us to help aim whatever we're going to aim, set it on a course, and we have good confidence that the space probe will make it to Jupiter with high degree of confidence. That is a deterministic system. Again, it allows you to predict the future and it allows you to go back in time. Well, not really go back in time, but to go back to see what things were back in an earlier part of time. Here's the exam another example. It's a very simple example of a deterministic system using a playing card. This is the three of clubs. This is our initial condition. So now we're going to start the experiment and we're going to turn the card over. Nothing is affecting this card. So all for all points going into the future, we know that this is going to be the three of clubs. 10 minutes from now, this will be the three of clubs. 100 years from now, this will be the three of clubs. Assuming no, nothing else comes in to affect this system, as long as the system is untouched by anything else. 
This is a stable deterministic system. I don't even have to pick this card up to look at the other side to know it's going to be the three of clubs. Okay, so in the future, 10 minutes from now, I know this will already still be the three of clubs. So essentially, I have a system that's deterministic because I know what the future state of that underside of that card is. And I don't have to look at it. I don't even have to look at it in 10 minutes. I know it's going to be the three of clubs. So already, I can see the future. So that is a deterministic system. A very simple, very simple idea of a deterministic system. So an indeterminist, an indeterminate system or a non-deterministic system is a system at, whose state at any time can only be determined by observing or by using probability and statistics trying to guess what the state of the system is. That's what we call statistical mechanics. That is pretty much mostly what quantum mechanics is. And again, the word indeterminate is a synonym of non-determinant. So you can equally say that a system is non-deterministic or you could say a system is indeterminate. The classic quantum mechanics example of an indeterministic system is the Schrodinger's cat experiment. Okay, in this experiment, we have a cat. We have a bottle of poison which will kill the cat. We have a radioactive source that can go off at any time, which will drop the hammer, smacking the vial of poison, releasing the poison, and killing the cat. Okay, it's kind of like a, you know, wild e. coyote invention. But now if we put a cover on this experiment, well, we have no deterministic means to know at any given time now when the cat will die, if the cat will die at all. We have, There's no means at our disposal. So the best we can use is what quantum mechanics will say is a probability superposition and say the cat at any time has a 50% probability of being alive and a 50% probability of being dead. And we're going to get into that more in the in one of the future videos where we're going to actually use this experiment and show you some of the puffery that goes on with quantum mechanics. But essentially, for the purposes of this video, this is an indeterminate system because we can't tell without looking in the box what the state of the cat is. We have no model, no uh, other means of knowing what the exact state of the cat is at any given time. So it's indeterminate to us. We can't determine it. Another example of a non-deterministic system or indeterminate system is this uh, lotto ball machine. Now, you could probably say, well, you know, if we measure all the balls perfectly and we are able to determine all of the, you know, wind speeds and how the motor works and how the gusts of air churn around in there and what the humidity is and if we measure all kinds of variables we could probably come up with a model that will give us a high degree of determinism of what the balls coming up will be that's probably the case but the people that run this lottery they turn the machines on they change the balls they all out all the time so they're there's always differing so the system is actually designed from the point of view how it's run so it'll never be determinable which balls come up. So for all intents and purposes, this is an indeterminate system. A great example of an indeterminate system is gambling. In this case, we're going to talk about blackjack. Because we don't have any foreknowledge of the order of the cards in the deck. The best we can use here is probability and statistics and card counting to try to optimize our bets to have an edge over the house. Now, of course, if the casino finds out you're doing card counting, they're going to break your legs or do whatever casinos do because card counting is illegal. Okay, but again, because we have no knowledge of how, after the shuffling, what the order of the cards in the deck are, we do not have a deterministic system. And so the best we can do is use probability and statistics to try to get an edge over the house. However, however, if we knew exactly the order of the cards in the deck, for whatever reason we could know, maybe 
maybe the cards are marked or or maybe we had a thing that could freeze time and allow us to go in and inspect the deck before the dealer started you know dealing the cards well then we would be able to bet in a very deterministic manner we would be able to bet perfectly because we would know which cards are coming out and it would be a very deterministic system at that time and this is very important because what this says is really the difference between a deterministic system and an indeterministic system is a lack of information or even a lack of knowledge. Let's say we don't know we don't know what causes that radioactive source to randomly go off, allowing the hammer to drop to kill the cat. But if we knew exactly what caused uh, the radioactive decay to occur, we could turn that into a deterministic system, and then we'd be able to model the case and know exactly when the cat was alive or when the cat was dead. Okay, so what we can say right now is that an indeterminate system is a system that we are lacking knowledge about. And that's where we're pretty much going to go in the coup de grace of quantum mechanics and basically say quantum mechanics is basically an acknowledgement that we don't know a lot about what's going on and that's why we're resorting to statistical mechanics which is statistics and probability but that's more for that video when we get there okay so the reason for this video is this video is going to be the basis for the 14th rule of acquisition which is going to be the insanity tell and the 14th rule of acquisition is going to be used in t12 breaking quantum mechanics where we're going to basically show you and prove to you without any stretch of any imagination that quantum mechanics will never ever be a significant part of a theory of everything in fact quantum mechanics dead is quantum mechanics is essentially dead thank you no more voodoo physics let's try to make everything deterministic rather than indeterminate